right, we're joined today by the offensive line coach at the University of Wyoming, Coach Miller here. Uh, coach, introduce yourself to our audience and tell us a little bit about your background in coaching. Well, it was Bart Miller. I'm the O-line coach and, and run game coordinator here at, at Wyoming. Um, I grew up uh, playing football and, and, and loving football just like everybody. And I grew up in Nebraska watching um, actually Coach Bowl. Coach, he was an assistant at the time, but under uh, Coach Tom Osborne and, and the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And, and they were really good, um, you know, when I was growing up and, and uh, kind of got the bug and uh, to, to, to not only play college football, but then to be a part of that my, the rest of my life. And um, I played at the University of New Mexico, played for Rocky Long, was our head coach, and, and our O-line coach was Bob Bostad. And, and um, you know, I, I believed we were one of the best offensive lines in the country down there. And, uh, um, you know, loved, loved the, the game, loved the strategy behind it, um, loved the training mechanism and, and, and all those things that went into it, loved the competition piece. Um, and, 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 you know, we're a different breed. Uh, when, when you get into the real world, um, not everybody was a collegiate athlete. Not everybody was a, was a high-level athlete or, or that wants that same measure of competition. And, uh, so I found that very challenging when I first entered the real world. Uh, I worked in the business side of, of uh, professional hockey. I was in the front office of the Chicago Blackhawks. And, and uh, great job, great opportunity. I learned a tremendous amount of, about professionalism and, and, and business and sports business at that. Um, but it wasn't football. It wasn't coaching. It wasn't the operational side. And um, I, I always knew I wanted to do that. I just never had the opportunity. And, and uh, an opportunity presented itself. A guy I played with was a, was an O-line coach and asked if I wanted to be his GA. So I kind of gave all that up and, and started coaching uh, at the bottom. And uh, then I worked my way up and, and have been around some phenomenal guys, um, great staffs, things that, that I've learned a great deal um, about the game, about life, uh, the management uh, of, of both, and, and the balance, um, and some things not to do. You know, learn learned from some guys that, um, you know, I didn't necessarily agree with either. But uh, all those things that kind of shaped my career, and, and I've been very, very fortunate and have stayed in, in, in this level and have worked with some tremendous players and some tremendous coaches. And um, it's kind of taken me all over the country from – Wisconsin to, to New Mexico to, to uh, Florida and Minnesota, Ohio, Colorado, um, then now Wyoming. So I've, I've, I've been really all over the place and, and, and have had a wealth of experience in, in what I consider a pretty short career so far and, and uh, looking forward to see what, what the rest of it looks like. So a little bit about my, my background and my climb through this thing, but uh, you know, we do the same thing we we do now, and, and I coach the same thing that I did when we played. And so um, know it very well, feel very confidently in it, and uh, it's had a tremendous amount of success everywhere we've been. So, All right, Coach. Uh, so we're going to turn it over to you now. You know, to talk through some, some gap scheme drills and some um, pass protection stuff on your end. Okay. I'll share my screen here. Um, I think that's what I want to do right there. Do you guys see that? It says gap game drills there. Yep. Okay, so uh, first couple things, working through some gap drills, we'll, we'll uh, isolate when we, when we talk about our gap scheme. So that's our A-gap power, our C-gap power, um, and then some of our quarterback power and power read things. They're all taught the same. And uh, we will isolate our front side combination blocks quite frequently. We'll work our back blocks, um, and we do a variety of different drills with the D line too, including pods, um, four on two, half line, all these different type of exercises or drill work throughout the, the course of the week. Uh, in addition to our individual time spent with um, really just the garden centers or, or tackles and guards, uh, even tackles tight ends. Um, so, so what we're looking at here is is really an isolation piece of a of a pods drill. Um, it's the center guard go, or guard center guard going against two interior guys, and and really we'll work uh, zone stuff out of this. We'll work gap stuff out of this, but um, it, it it's not the easiest of assignments to do because you know the defense is playing; they don't have their keys and things like that. They can just come off the ball, but that's what we really want to emphasize. We want it to be challenging for our guys. So practice should be hard and demanding so that the game comes easy. And, and uh, 
that, that's a big philosophy that we carry here and have always carried is, is that our training should be very, very difficult. And it puts you in difficult situations. So I want those guys to go against guys that are lined up off sides. I want them to um, go against d- defenders that really have no other key but just blowing off the ball and trying to, trying to, to, to stuff the, the, the block, right? So um, that's th- this example. So you can see we're working really just an A-gap pull, which we call a shuffle pull. Um, and in the shuffle pull, the pulling guard will, will drop – um, to gain a little bit of depth, but he's not losing a lot of ground. You can see that first step. He's not losing a lot of ground, okay, but he's square, but he's clearing that tackle's back block. And the reason we shuffle pull and not skip pull um, is, one, I don't want to cross our feet behind the line of scrimmage. I also don't want to raise up too much. When you skip pull, everybody jumps up out of their stance and things of that nature. But we shuffle pull uh, really for a, a couple things. We shuffle pull – um, for the timing purpose, more than anything, um, that the timing is 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 not as fast as a C gap power um, or gap scheme would be, where, where where you're really running and scraping off the ass of the double team. We are trying to set up an insert from A gap to A gap, so that gives us time really um, to be able to insert. The other thing we do, and we want to emphasize here, is on the on the, the square pole, is that he very well may insert right after the center. So if, if he's open pulling or, or, or skip pulling or whatever it is, um, it's going to be very difficult to make it that more of an immediate insert here. So uh, as he's shuffle pulling, it does slow the timing down a little bit and then allows for an immediate insert um, on, on the pole. So he is reading that front side combination. Now, our front side guard, his feet are all over the place. You can see that right there. So his feet aren't great. Um, all over the place, especially that, that big third step where he loses his base here. But he is really um, trying to work a, an initial deuce um, steps, or what most people call deuce, we call them tags, um, steps where he would have the tackle help. Now, obviously, he doesn't have the tackle help here, so he's trying to take more of it, which is why um, really his feet get, get kind of jambled there. But he, that pulling guard is reading that inside block or that, that front side combination for his insert. So ways to train that really on a, on a, on a pods drill. Okay, same thing here, um, working the square pull, right? He reads his oaky front, so he knows there's probably going to be an insert um, right after the guard, right? Uh, and we need to get vertical movement and, and displacement on the nose, uh, again, to try to keep that A-gap open. Okay, the tackle is not necessarily trying to jam that four eye down in there like he would on a normal power play, like a normal C gap power play. A gap power, everything is, is predicated on keeping those two A gaps open. So uh, on, a, on an odd look, on a, on a four or four eye technique, that tackle is really trying to base and drive the four eye vertically, uh, knowing he's going to get what we call a double bump right here, just like this pulling guard, shuffling, shuffling on this pull. Uh, then he finds his insert. Now he double bumps to again keep that a gap open um, in in an odd look. So um, as you see, that a gap is, is is open because we did move the nose. We did keep it open with the bump here by the four eye, and then there's your hole. Okay, so um, that's a that, those are that's just another half line example. Um, another half line example here of some power with a with a. a um, a, a tag, and you can see the tag is trying to generate vertical movement here again to keep that a gap open, right? So a gap to a gap is trying to stay open. We want to keep this thing vertical um, on the tag instead of uh, maybe in C gap power. We would we would, this guy steps to the guard. We want to roll him down inside, and he'd pull around, scraping the ass of the double team. In in a gap power, we want to take this thing vertically as possible again to keep both these. AFs open, okay, uh, and really center also has to generate tremendous movement. You have to have a really good center. Our center here, uh, again, didn't get a second step in the ground. You can see he makes contact by the second step. That's the reason why it doesn't generate a whole lot of movement initially. Um, again, that's a challenge. I mean, you could you could argue that that guy's pretty well off sides, right? I mean, that's helmet to helmet, and that's okay because in the game he won't be there, uh, and and then we're going to be into our steps and, and, and be engaging in a defender to be much easier for us. So um, that's part of the premises when we train our drill work. So you can see the finish and the movement. And this is a starting D tackle, getting vertical movement on this thing. Okay, then extension comes. Um, and then obviously we, we bury and finish. So that's what we're looking for 
uh, on some of these half line deals. Okay. Um, again, just emphasizing the two interiors. So we do a lot of this half line, a lot of pods, four on two. Those are all uh, areas of, of things we're trying to work on to really emphasize not only the back block, uh, but the, the, the front side combination. And then the pull, just continuous repetition. So a couple things to look at. You can do it with, with um, pads. You can do it with no pads, whatever it is. Um, so if we're working um, in, in helmets, we're working in, in um, maybe during the off season where we're not allowed to have equipment, you can still be able to execute some of these different half line drills and incorporate some of these different schemes into um, some of your work. Uh, and we've got a bunch of those different things, okay? And, and that's all the half line, different variations of the look. From a sled perspective, we don't do a whole lot of sled work. Uh, if we do, it's very, very isolated um, it, with the one man or the, or the Crowther sled sometimes for, from time to time. But um, you can see here, we're working just a one man sled deal. And, and what we call this is gap leader and go and gap leader and off. Um, and so what that means really is we're isolating that front side combination. So this is a, this is a tackle here, but it could be a guard, it could be a center. It really doesn't matter. The technique should remain the same and consistent. Um, but that is a, well, for, for, for purposes of, of explaining the drill, we'll call him a guard. That's a three technique, okay? And he's the inside man on a, on a combination. And so he's going to step, pick it up, put it down with his inside foot. Again, we're a play side foot team first. So a gap schemes, your, your play side gap is your inside gap right on the front side. So we're always going to step with our play side foot first and then drive our second up the crotch of the defender. The second step must be in the ground before contact. That's uh, critical. Uh, all your power comes from that second step. So um, that's a, a huge, huge coaching point for us um, on our footwork. But you can see he's going to drive that second step through the crotch of the defender. Uh, and and for, for purposes of the drill, we might middle it up a little more than maybe we would try to in, in a, an actual human body there um, because we do not have the tackle with us. But he is driving that thing vertically, keeping that inside hand free because, again, he is working to um, – that backside linebacker there. And I will be back with a whistle. So blow the whistle once or say set hut once. He comes off and engages. Second whistle, now he's off on a on, on the defender who would be running through here, or simulating a run through uh, on your combination. And you can see when he comes off, he is looking to strike. We do have some forward lean. We're not necessarily bent at the waist and overextended, but he's hitting with the screws of his helmet and his hands. That's the way we screw or hit. Um, and then you can see his body position is ready and powerful to deliver a strike, and that's what happens. So that's a uh, gap leader and off. You can see it again there. Uh, and again, he's the inside man on that combination. The tackle would be here, right, driving this thing vertically. And then the inside guy's the eyes. He sees his backer run underneath, and he's off. Tackle overtakes the bag. So that's really just an isolation piece of a front side double on the sled. The next thing we'll do, okay, is, is take these linebackers away. Now this same linebacker where he was coming off to has just run over the top of that combination. So on the second whistle, he now has to overtake this, knock the tackle off. And that's what that's called gap leader and go. So you're going to work with the center here. And you can see the transition. His eyes will be to this backer. This backer runs over the top. And now he overtakes the nose, knocking the guard to come off um, with, with the run, run, top, run through over the top. So that's really the only sled work we'll do with, with our gap scheme uh, is just working the isolation piece of that front side double. So on our poles, um, we'll train the pole quite, quite a bit because it is such an adjustment to what uh, a normal C-gap power pole would be. And we'll look at both of those. But again, we're talking about the A-gap power, the shuffle pole. Um, you can see the center back block. And then we put this trash can here um, really to signify the double. So he's beating that double. He sees that thing going vertical, and now he's going to get vertically through that insert. So the, the, one of the big coaching points with A-gap power um, from a puller standpoint is you are not necessarily pulling for a man. Where in C-gap power, you're pulling for that front side linebacker. Uh, you're in, in A-gap power, you're not necessarily pulling for the man. You're pulling for the area. So if we uh, were getting vertical movement here, we would tell this combination to really stay on. Uh, because we know there's going to be this big A-gap entry here. Um, and we tell our puller, if you insert, your eyes now go backside. 
So if you insert inside that double team, your eyes are going back inside because we're again we're telling this guy to stay on, and now it becomes almost like a true lead play, really in essence, uh, if you're going to give it a name. But that's that's you can see how it's trained, and then there's the there's the read, there's the insert, and that timing is about accurate so that that uh, you know, we can set this up and go. And again, this is obviously during the off season here, so they can train you around doing some of these things with very minimal equipment. You don't necessarily need to be um, engineered and in, in, in with, with equipment. When you are in practice uh, during the season or the course of the, of the practice week, typically um, these drills can be can be utilized in, in, in pads and scouting guys and, and everything. So um, here's another one where the the we're, we're simulating this being a little bit closer. Um, hoping that, that that illustrates that this is being rolled down inside. So now he's going to end up getting around it, okay, and then finding uh, his point of entry. Uh, we can train the double bump the same way. So there's a double bump. Um, let's say we get split here or the guard has to leave, all right? And so now your tackle um, is, is really fit up on the outside shoulder of this thing, trying to overtake it. Maybe it's getting worked inside here. Um, Maybe it's the odd look with the poor eye. Uh, so either way, those can simulate those different scenarios. And here's the insert with the double bump, keeping, again, that A-gap open. And you can see his eyes uh, are looking to the imaginary second level. And again, you know, you got, you got four guys here operating um, and can do all this drill work very, very, very quickly. Uh, from a, from a C-gap power pole, um, that, this is why we train them differently because they are uh, a different. You can see his initial step here. Uh, C gap powers, we open pull. And it's not a ring the gong situation. It's not a flip your hips uh, and, and be parallel to the line of scrimmage. Um, it, it, we, we really coach keeping our hips closed as possible. And the way we do that uh, is to step and point our toes where to where we are pulling. So, so the linebacker on the front side, this is C gap power. That's who we'd be pulling for. So he's going to take this step, and his toe is going to point right to where that linebacker is, which is going to keep his hips closed and his hips pointed to that linebacker. He is still opening and running. And so you can see he doesn't fall step. He doesn't lose a lot of ground. He's efficient with those first two steps. And then we are running down the line. It's not a shuffle anymore. And we put that board there to simulate the, 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 the front side double. You could certainly incorporate both your front side double with the pull as well. Uh, but we've already done that at this point in practice. Uh, so he is scraping tight off the ass of the double team. We actually say paint the fence. So if you put his hands out there, if he puts his inter inside hand, he should be able, okay, to kind of paint that fence. Um, and so he is scraping off the ass of the double team, looking for inside out any point on that defender. And then he's, he gets there. And if the defender um, wrong arms him or spills, then he can, again, get it vertical and bury that thing uh, up in the line of scrimmage. So that's a pretty good example there. If you get it to run through uh, linebacker, this was actually engineered for, an, for a counter pull um, or power read, but it's really the same type of pull, whether it would be for that front side linebacker running through, running over the top maybe of the double on the front side, uh, or maybe we're just kicking out the defensive end on a power read type play. Um, it's the same type of pull. So again, he's going to open up just a little bit, maybe more severe, uh, just because of the angle of departure. And you can see his toe is, again, pointed towards the defender. It's going to keep his hips as close as he can to the line of scrimmage. And then he is running, accelerating through that point of contact. You can see he makes contact with his hands and his screws. We're in a very good body position here um, with momentum going through that defender. Again, another way to illustrate the pull, working on the front side tag. Okay, this is an open pull. You can see that initial step, that toe, okay, is pointed towards that front side linebacker, and he keeps his hips closed, and he is running, painting the fence tight as he can off the double team. We're not getting a tremendous amount of resistance there on that defender, uh, but he is painting off, tight off the ass of the double team, and then you can see his Amy point, okay, inside out on that front side linebacker. So a um, couple different ways there to train both in the season and out of season, working on. Uh, the open pull and the A-gap pull, the, the square pull. So different ways we pull. Combinations are the, really the same way. And most of this drill work, if you were on my clinic the other night, um, we went through a lot of it with the A-gap stuff. But um, a lot of this was filmed during during off-season workouts or during, um, 
you know, see times where, where we were not practicing. And, and our guys um, really make an emphasis of, of, of working on their craft, mastering their craft on their own. I give them some, some different things to do based on, on what their workout would be uh, that particular week in the weight room. But they go out and, and then still work on these things year round. So uh, again, take a big ownership of it, big accountability of mastering your craft. And that's what, that's what you're seeing here is the result of it. Um, but working a front side combination, this is just a, a center. Now this is a, um, a guard who's playing center. His second step again is not where it needs to be. That, that's not what we're looking for. So it's a very poor second step here. Um, you kind of just just pivots on the inside heel there. So we would like no different than if this was a guard to drive that second up the up the crotch of the defender, um, and then really our uh, trail man in this combination. In this case, the the, the right guard. Um, he needs to be a little bit quicker with the second step. That's not too bad right at contact. Probably just a little bit longer of a second step. But he is trying to match really his first step with the with the second as close as he can. Uh, again, going for the V of the neck Amy point here and then trying to either roll it inside if he plays tight to the center uh, or get vertical on this. And as a center guard combination, we really are looking for the guard to get up um, on this, which is what ends up happening. Okay, again, same same premise. Um, and now here's a run through. So you're looking at the, at the uh, one man sled. Really, that's the same same block. It's just isolated uh, in the one man sled. He would be trying to again drive that second vertical. It's not good uh, by this by this uh, player here who is playing center in this particular drill. We need to drive that second step, but he's ready to come off and engage. We will allow if you can see that left hand of his. If if this guy is tight to him, um, or if he's deep, we will allow this other hand to come engage as long as it doesn't turn our shoulders. But if there's any type of run through um, or, or a severe angle, then we want to keep that inside hand, or in this case, the outside hand free. And then same thing working guard center combinations here, just like we've been doing. Um, we can do it not only to a typical uh, linebacker, but we can also do um, some various scenarios where this guy maybe is on the ball. Uh, and we're getting a lot of this exchange. Um, instead of a true back block, we will technically work this, what we call a cage, cage back to that defender, uh, as opposed to just going back, back, uh, like some guys would in power. So you can see, uh, really, it, it allows us to be able to pick up some of that line movement. Okay, and then, and then the other, just kind of a basic guard or center uh, guard combination, guard tackle or center guard combination, just working under the cage. Uh, this is when we were at Wisconsin, we do the same thing. So um, just align your defender up in any, any type of alignment that, that you're working that particular week um, and then work in the cage, keeping your pad level down. We use the cage every day. Every day, that's where most of our individual work will be spent um, when, when we have access to it. Obviously, sometimes we change our practice fields and, and whatever, but uh, here's, a, here's another example. Um, and you can see we're just a little bit slow, maybe just a little slow with that second step. He's getting it probably toed in the ground right at contact. We need to be a little bit more quicker with that. Um, but this would be a situation where he comes and engages that guard. The tighter he is to the guard, especially in C-gap power, we're going to want to throw him down inside and get the tackle up. The A-gap stuff, um, we would like to have it a little bit more vertical. If they do take that away, uh, in the A gap, and they do end up coming down, and we do get this thing washed. It's no problem. That's why we're shuffle pulling on the timing, and then we just get around that double team, and it would end up looking very similarly to uh, the C gap power stuff, which is what you're seeing here. Okay, guard and tackle again, working a three technique uh, tag, a basic tag block, and it's a pretty good example. Initially of the steps, we probably just get a little bit wide here, but there is that second trying to drive vertical up the crotch of the defender. He is keeping that out inside hand free because his eyes are here. And you can see now he's off just like we would be in the one man sled. Same thing in the cage, a uh, variety of different ways you can train these different, these different looks. And then um, have the guys running over the top, have the guys running underneath, walk ups, um, movement, anything you want. That's how we, we will train that throughout the week. So most of our indie time is spent uh, on the run game, especially in the first part of practice, working various combinations. 
and various things you'll see in those combinations. Um, the pass pro stuff is done at the end of practice because we want um, really, especially our sets, our one-on-ones, um, some of those type of things, uh, punch drills, things of that nature uh, are done at the end of practice because number one, if we are in a game-like scenario where that is, is, is vital and that's what we're using, um, it's going to be at the end of the game because we're going to be behind. We're a running team and, and we want to establish the run. So if we're going to be in a drop back mode or two minute mode or whatever that is, it's going to be at the end of the half, end of the game, uh, where we're, we're a very pass center happy uh, team at that time. Um, and, and so your legs are gassed and you need to be able to train that way um, during practice. Uh, the other thing we'll do is, is pre-practice, we'll get out there with, with the kickers and, and all that kind of stuff and we'll go through a little pass pro circuit um, as a warm up, and to get some of the maybe the, the more mundane pass pro drill work and isolation drill work done uh, beforehand, it takes five minutes, five ten minutes, and we'll go through that here in a little bit. But um, you can see the variations of the uh, of the different looks we can give our guys from time to time. Uh, and again, working with the tackle tight end, it's the same way. So really, that interior guy, right? The interior, the tackles aren't great at it because we don't do it a whole lot. But then that this block here. Whether that's a tackle, a guard, or center should be, should be very, very similar, if not the same. And same way with your tackle, tight end, whatever it is. So it should allow you to be able to train these uh, quite frequently and quite consistently. And, and again, we, we would like to get the tight end. If we're getting any type of what we call um, the, the, the eat here, end and tackle, if we're getting any type of eat block here, we really want um, this tight end to be up on, on this guy coming over the top. And again, C-gap power is when we would do that. Here's another example. And you can see here's that gap leader in go. So we're the eyes of the operation, right? Our eyes are on that backer and we're driving, driving, driving. He runs over the top and now he takes it over. And so really work in both of those scenarios. Um, when it comes to the game, you can see this is not necessarily a, um, a true power scheme, but it is a pin pull. It was a gap type G scheme. Uh, and this block is the same. So you can kind of see there's the uh, initial eat, and then we're knocking that that uh, five technique so far inside, actually we end up tackling up having to come off on it. But you can see that when, when it translates to the field, um, you want to get lift here on this guy. You can see we're in a pretty good position. Thailand comes in and attacks that hip, rolls that thing over the top, uh, and we've got a pretty good play if we can get that thing done. Um, so that's really, uh, in a nutshell, how we would train some of those gap schemes and, and variations, um, really variations of the uh, uh, combination. So that front side tag, that front side uh, double team is when we will really work most of those combinations. And in and, and, and individual time, that's when we're going to change up the, the alignment of the defender. We're going to put him maybe head up on the, on the guard in a two technique, we'll go might go a wide three or a four I. Um, we'll run through the linebackers. We'll we'll actually do some things where we'll work uh, with our linebackers crossing like the mad cross pressures and, and variations of that movement. Um, so so you can do a variety of things, and that's typically what we'll spend most of our gap scheme time on. Uh, and then pulls uh, probably about a period or so um, any given day. So when you break it down. Um, we're probably a little more, I'd say probably a little more than 30, 30 to 40 percent of our run game individual time is spent on the gap scheme uh, because some, th some things do carry over. But uh, it's, it's absolutely a vital piece of what we train and we do every day. And then we'll, we'll use that in inside drill. We'll use that in pods um, and, and, and mix some things up uh, in team as well. So um, that, those, are, those are probably our base ways we'll, we'll work, spending a, a very large amount of time on our combinations in the, in the cage and out of the cage uh, in, in various alignments. So uh, hopefully that, that gives you a little bit of a, uh, of a snapshot of some different things you could do and some different drills you could do if you're working for A-gap power. Uh, from a pass pro standpoint, um, and we'll move to, to some pass pro, um, we've put together really over the course of um, 10 years or so, like uh, this, what's called a pass pro circuit. And again, this is pre practice. We'll get out there and just kind of, it, it serves as partly as a warm up and, and, and partly as a, as a way to get some of the um, kind of the mundane drills, like the, the side to side 
change of change of direction and agility, um, kind of drill work in the pass pro schemes, mirror drill, that type of thing. We'll get that out of the way. Um, so they're, they're still working the specific skills, but it's not taking up per periods of practice and individual time when we could be hitting, we could be working on our combinations, we could be working on, again, you know, sets or, or, or moves against the defense, um, doing a little bit more realistic things as opposed to the stuff that you could probably do in the offseason. But uh, it is important. But one of the things I hated as a young coach was uh, being around guys that would spend five to ten minutes doing some, you know, angle set into a cone when, when we should practice should be demanding. And that, to me, as a player, that stuff was easy. It was It was a little bit more muscle memory and just kind of, working into the things and, and really emphasizing on maybe your pad level and your body position and things like that. Whereas uh, we weren't, I didn't feel like we were really doing much and you're wasting valuable minutes of, of, of individual time and practice time when you do have scouts and you do have defensive guys with you where you should be working the combinations and, and doing things that are going to help you on, on live speed and game flow, uh, game speed type stuff. Where So that's kind of how we did this. If you look really just this first deal, um, this first thing was would, would be really just a, a, a specific drill sheet that they would have during the off season, and that's what that was for. Um, but really setting the line, setting the ladder. We like to put uh, during the regular school season when I'm out there, we'll have a ladder set up. Our GAs will have a speed one of those speed ladders set up, and they got to set the ladder. Uh, if not, they'll just use a pick a line on the field, and they're really just working in, in a, a set. So coming out of a stance, exploding set, big chest, shoulders back, hands up, ready to strike, uh, and then really just working a, a, just a kick set, kick set, kick set, kick set, over and over. Guard center, does not matter. Tackle, does not matter. Really, it's just working kind of the fluidity of the set, working on the explosion to set. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, all, all that intense initially, just want it done correctly. And again, all this stuff is pre-practice. So um, this is before we even get going into the scheme of things. Next thing, after the ladder set, we'll go to just what we call a bag punch. Um, if we're not in pads, the guys, will, the, the defensive guys will have a, a bag in front of them, their hand shield in front of them, if we're in pads. Uh, I want them hitting live body so they can have a target. They can see uh, the, the, the shoulder pad and the chest protector and see where their hands are going to go, where they can lock on and, and fit and those type of things. But really, again, just exploding set, big shoulders, big chest. Um, Shoulders are back, kind of pinching your shoulder or the, the, your shoulder blades together, um, and, and sitting your ass down uh, with your hands up, ready to strike. And you can kind of see when when uh, the guard here, Logan, he punches and then he doesn't drop his hands. He recoils, right? But he's now ready to strike again. He doesn't go back down to his belt, right? You protect your chest like a boxer protects his face, and you're ready to strike. And a very uh, explosive movement there. That 45 degree angle is very explosive movement. We don't teach uh, elbows in. We teach thumbs up. Um, and, and really the natural way of your, of your arms, if your thumbs are up, it's naturally going to bring your elbows in as opposed to trying to keep your elbows tight to your sides. There should be, uh, just like a bench press, there should be uh, an angle, okay, to your strike. And again, violent, violent hands, um, keeping your head out on your extension. So bag punch. Uh, and then the next guy's up and ready to go. Here's another bag punch. Uh, and then once they're done with that, they'll go to bag punch and move. So now the defender uh, will engage and then he'll move. And now we have to power set and then kick off of it, power set and then kick off of it. So the bag punch and move piece of it where it's really just one-on-one -on -one with a guy moving. So that's, a, that's the next thing. Um, after that, they'll go to side to side, what we call side to side. Uh, and you got two defenders lined up two or three, four yards apart. Um, and, and this one, you really got to gotta coach the defenders because it'll be uh, human nature to get tighter and tighter and to come to a point, and we don't want that. Uh, we want them to pick a spot, a landmark, and walk. Pick a landmark and walk, um, and that way it allows us to uh, have some, some space to cover where we are power setting and then kicking off of it. So you see he'll set inside first, um, this, this player will set inside first. My computer froze on me here. Hold on. So he'll set inside first, punch, and then kick off of that punch. Power, kick, power, kick. The th it's important, uh, especially on the inside move. Now he gets a little bit overextended here. Um, it's important. We don't want to also reach 
both arms out here. You want your feet to get you all the way over so I can punch straight ahead and then off of her. Um, and that's just work in just various change of direction, side to side movements. So you see here um, is now what we call post and stab. And I'll show you another example of how we did this, but um, we are taking part of the twist or D-line game uh, in the pass off. And now we're isolating just one player uh, on the offense. So this would be a, a, an outside guy, a tackle. Um, he is technically setting to that defensive end. So he's going to set to the defensive end. The defensive end drops and loops. Now he powers back inside to take uh, the penetrator. So the looper will always take you to the penetrator. Um, and that's what he's really training here. So set, 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 boom. And it's just working really um, his change of, of direction, um, reaction, and then the, the, the foot position. So he's not dropping that inside foot and getting split uh, on a game. So that's called post and stab. And, and again, you can see this slide, we break the lines up. These guys are doing something else. They're, they're doing side to side now. They're a little far behind. These guys are working post and stab already. So we have, we ended up dividing the lines uh, and getting through this thing, this little circuit in, in about five minutes, um, which, is, which has been really, really good. So here's another example uh, of, again, an interior guy. He's actually got his post hand in there. He is in 71 here. And he's actually got his post hand in there. So then he comes in, there's the loop. He comes in and, and takes now the penetrator. Now we had the penetrator working various moves. So trying to get a, a club, a pull, um, long arm, break your hands down, whatever it is. Now he's got to work flat to flatten out that penetrator. So uh, here's another example of that post and stab. So uh, from a, from a uh, second piece of this, okay, now this is called two punch delay. So what he's going to do now, we, we've, we've, worked having the looper so now you have the penetrator so uh here's a guard the guards are working really outside back in and so he's going to set on the three technique right punches the three the tackle has the looper he's already said go 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 to pass him off and now he comes in to take the looper so really both of these two drills this is called two punch delay the other one's called post and stab uh, really isolating the two different types of blocks on a pass off uh, on any of your rush rush twists and things of that nature. Tackles would work. Um, if this was a tackle, you know, he'd have a penetrator working on the inside. He'd work inside back out. So tackles work inside back out. Guards and centers work outside back in. Um, here's another example. Set, go, go, go. Now he's ready for the defender. We want to avoid, you can see what's happening here. He, he's kind of, he does punch. But he ends up kind of throwing him aside. We want to avoid that. We want to flatten that thing out. We don't want to propel him into uh, the tackle. Um, so just a little bit of, a, of an example there. Here's a tackle example. So now working inside, now kick back off for the looper. Okay, so post and stab, two punch delay. Very, very uh, beneficial drills that we'll do. Um, so when it comes time to passing games off, they know how to be able, they know how to do that uh, from, from a technique standpoint. Down the line, quite simply, just partnering up. Uh, one side's on offense, one side's on defense. Um, and, and you really want to keep this as your line of scrimmage as the offensive player. Uh, so keep him off of it. And you can see he's just giving him two different targets, chest, shoulder, chest, shoulder, different shoulders, changing up, turn, spin, whatever it is. And we're keeping good body position here. Head is up, right? Our eyes are up. Okay, he's looking at the center of the chest, right where that we have an Adidas mark on our on our low on our jerseys. That's where um, we, we we focus on. And you can see 45 degree angle, pretty good knee bend. Shoulders are back, chest is big, uh, keeping his head out of it, and then just working down the line. So that's down the line. This is this is a three bag uh, rotational punch. So he's going to set on the defender. Uh, uh, this guy's going to pick a direction, and that's the way he's set first. So uh, he sets, and he's going to go whatever side that defender goes to, punch, back to punch this bag, and then look for the middle on the punch. So, again, just variations of side-to-side -side drill work. Um, typically not very realistic. You know, in no way are you going to punch three things in, in one particular deal. But it does allow you to, to, to work some different angles um, and, and, and concentration pieces on a set. So setting on a defender. Come moving, coming back, punching another defender, maybe on a game, but just some awareness, uh, being able to control your steps and control your body.
keeping your head out of things. Another drill we'll do, uh, not so much during the year, this is more of an off-season drill, but it is it is kind of a, a ball buster and a, and a good one, um, really to, to work kind of at the end of end, end of, a, of a workout or end of a practice day. Um, and, and he's going to really just have, start at a starting point. You can kind of see, here's your line. They didn't have cones, but normally if we're doing this, uh, where when coaches are out there, uh, I will set up cones here where these bags are. But what he's going to do is going to kick to the cone, really have some awareness. He's looking forward the whole time. He shouldn't look back at the cone and just kind of, again, work in that body position, that body feel. And then he's going to power set inside, kick, power set inside, kick, power set inside. And the idea being forms one half of a Christmas tree. So we call these Christmas trees. Again, exploding to set. He should have a big chest. We give him a plate to hold. Um, you big chest, shoulders back. He gets a little bit forward of, on his lean. Uh, and then you, what we want to avoid is that big drop right there, right? So he's getting all the way back and then power setting, right? Back, power setting, back, power setting, as opposed to swinging that gate open. So he's a little bit kind of humpty dumpty here, getting overextended and leaning back into his brakes, which is not what we're looking for. Uh, but again, if you can do this at the end of practice, when you are gassed, uh, and, and execute good technique and, and things of that nature. That's just going to help with your muscle memory when it comes time to uh, uh, do that in two minute situations. But those are those are, are fairly challenging for for, for young players, especially. A uh, little bit more fluid here, uh, quick on his transition. You can see uh, his body control is a little bit better. A little bit, little bit too much of a lean, kind of like he's trying to drive a car right here, kind of leaning into it with his with his core. We want to keep his core tight. Um, and, and not get the shoulder tilt as much as as much as we can avoid that. And again, those are those are Christmas trees. Um, and then just working various uh, various types of moves and sets. Here's a here's really just mirror drill. Um, and again, we don't put our hands behind our back. We we kind of treat the mirror drill just like the live uh, down the line action stuff, where that's your line of scrimmage. Get him off of it. He gets close. Pop him back. Uh, really working uh, to try to keep a relationship too, okay? And, and again, good body control. And it doesn't have to be this long deal, long-winded thing. It can be very quick, very concise, um, six seconds or five seconds, whatever it is, as long as it's sharp in their engagement. So, you know, when a guy just sits back here and runs, that doesn't do you a lot of good. I mean, have him engage, have him spin, have him do some things where they're, they're forced to engage and then disengage, um, which is what you're looking for. Um, we'll get to a few more things here from a pass pro standpoint. So six bag punch is another, another deal we'll do, um, and, and another drill work we'll do. And again, in our pre-practice circuit, and you look at this, it really, he's in gate punching a defender. We'll have guys, we can do this with all med balls. We can do it with all pads. Uh, it doesn't really matter. We can, you can kind of mix it up. But we should be working down the line very similar to what we were before uh, with various targets, various things to strike. And then coming back, and the next guy's up and ready to go. And then next guy's ready to go, and, and, it, and it rotates like that. It should be, should be very quick. You can get through that very, very quickly. Um, so just th we, we'll do this one from, from time to time. We, we work uh, a specific protection where we have guys mollying, we have guys popping, things of that nature, and that's really what this is for. So if you have a protection base where your uncovered guy pops um, to take a hit off and, and things like that, that's really what, what this is, 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 is we want him – we put this guy here really to, to emphasize you've got you to honor this, um, which is what he's doing, trying to honor that, and then all of a sudden – he disappears, all his defenders disappear, and now we're looking to pop. So uh, we'll, we'll implement some of these pop drills as well, just with a punch and a loop, what we call punch and loop. Um, enables us to really work kind of that, that pop element and probably a little bit far there. So a uh, way we can work that. And really this initial defender, it's not like we would punch, punch, and then leave it. This is really to, to make sure he engages um, and uh, make sure that he honors whatever his initial threat is, and then look for the pop. And really, that's to take a hit off. So the other thing we'll do is 
what we call four alignment sets. And so we'll line up everybody again, partnering up four alignment sets. They'll start with initial inside alignment, uh, give a simple command on one side, set hut, and then everybody will set inside, just one kick, one slide. And really all this does is really work the relationship uh, that you're getting to on your, on your aiming point. Okay, then, then after the inside move, now they'll go head up and they'll really work just a replace set. And then we'll go to a three technique. Oh, I missed it, I'm sorry. Go back to that. Inside alignment, head up, and then they'll go to a three. And then they'll go to a wider alignment where you gotta get two kicks in. And really that's just working um, kind of that aiming point on your set. We'll work some sets versus moves and some push pull especially. Uh, and that's what that is as well. Uh, working the push pull, we do that quite a bit, uh, particularly on the edges. And then we'll work some various games with each other. This is this is at another school, uh, Florida, Florida Atlantic, when we were at FAU, uh, working games with each other. And then when we come back together with the defense, um, is is when we'll do some one on ones and, and, and things like that. And you can see uh, that's a vital piece to it. I think that one on ones is fantastic. The games are fantastic, um, even though that it's a drill. That's, that's very much cited towards the defense, um, that's, that's okay. We love that. We love how, how challenging that is for us because if you can execute here um, in, in this type of scenario where it's truly one-on-one, -on -one, he, has, he has no other responsibility other than getting to the quarterback, uh, and they rush out of their lane all the time, as you can see. Uh, if you can do that here, you're certainly going to be able to, to pass protect well uh, in a game scenario, especially when if you're sliding or, or, or those guys have other – um, keys and things that, that they got to be able to execute. So um, we, we do want it challenging for our guys and, and, and we, don't, uh, we don't apologize for that. And so there is no excuse. And, and so the way we'll do our one-on-ones, we'll really start at the tackle position and we'll work our way down. We'll come back and do that again. So, um, and, and we don't have, you know, I know a lot of guys have five guys lined up and only one buddy, one, but one person's live and no one knows who that is and all that. We, I, I think that's, um, I think that's a little, I don't know, a little bit, a little bit much. Um, you know, I, I like having the pressure of one on one. I like having this. Everybody knows it's it's man versus man, right? And and I got to beat this guy. And and uh, uh, so we like having that aspect of it. Um, and and have had a lot of success with it. And again, the physicality behind it needs to be good. Here's just working the various things that you see from those pass pro circuits, uh, really working into play when it comes time for. Um, the execution in one on one. So really, just side to side. This is just bag punch and move, uh, or side to side. I mean, he sets the guy powers inside on an inside rush, and he flattens it out. Hands are inside, um, and then we work to to, to to obviously be very very physical. Uh, again, same thing, right? Hands are out, working that you know this you could elements of the Christmas tree, elements of six bag punch down the line, mirror drill, um, the side to side stuff. It all it all kind of plays in together. Um, you know, and then and then we'll uh, do a lot of lot of this with with our tackles. Even if we're not doing one on ones, we'll get the DNs and the tackles together to work just our vertical set. And you watch, we're a vertical set team. So he is trying to get. He opens too soon here. We're trying to get four square kicks in, four square kicks in before we open. And again, we want this guy to be able to run the hoop. And if you get four square kicks, you're going to be at quarterback depth. He's going to have to make a secondary move at that point. If you set and open, he's going to press that angle right away, and that's what he that's what he try, should be doing here. Um, and so we really want four vertical kicks. Our tackles are responsible for the width of the pocket, okay, and our interior is responsible for the depth of the pocket, so that there should be a true pocket um, when it comes time to do that. When it comes time to step up and deliver a throw, okay. So again, this is you know. Probably a pretty unrealistic rush. I mean, I don't know how many, um, you know, in one-on-ones, in, in one -on this guy's lined up as a four on the guard. You know, we all, all line coaches know that when, when in the game scenario, your, your three technique, if this, if this is the way look we're going to get, well, we'll just run inside zone or power, or a gap power here, right, and, and, uh, and blow them up. So, again, we, we encourage that during this training mechanism because it is hard on the guard. I mean, I'm very rarely going to ask the guard to go set normally out on a four technique, uh, but he does. You can see he, the guard's much more flatter in his set. He is 
still square as possible. His toes are as square as possible. And then he delivers a great strike. Heads out, and he gets displacement. Now there's going to be a secondary move. Now we got to be able to adjust. And, and then there's, there's the pocket, right? And the ball's away. We're going to win that one. Again, same thing, working again a, a ridiculously wide three technique. Um, and if he wants to go out there, just don't don't chase, right? Let him go out there. Uh, keep your head out of your punch, but he gives you that target, guys. That's why we do those punch drills. He opens up the swim, gives you that target. There's the strike, right? Now he is uh, facing the other way, running the other way. We're going to have this pocket well intact. Um, and then obviously the physical aspect of it too. So. Um, same thing with the tackles, right? I mean, every once in a while, it's probably a little more realistic. You're going to get a wide five, especially in a pass pro situation, but that's okay. Uh, we want to be able, and I and I'll I'll mess with the cadence and things like that, and and, and uh, so that there's got to be some adjustment. But you can see he's trying to. He probably gets a little bit wide initially, but he is trying to keep that toe point forward. You can see 75. He's as square as possible, and that guy's going to make a secondary move, and so he doesn't think he can get the edge. Because we're square, so now he kind of powers back inside. We're in good position um, to lock that thing back down. Pretty good job by that kid, uh, keeping the width of the pocket. So, um, again, the one-on-ones are, are critical, uh, I think. And, and we do these, try to do these at the end of the day. It's certainly after our inside and after our, our run game stuff um, so that your legs are somewhat gassed when you're doing this. Because if you can protect when you're tired, you're certainly going to be able to protect in a, in a live situation at the end of the game, which is when we would be using it. Uh, again, left side, really the same principle. Uh, inside move, being able to flatten that inside move out. Using our hands, keeping our head out, and then finish everything. Finish everything. Um, and, and that's a, a, a huge piece of what we talk about. And then uh, the game from a game scenario, we'll work quite a few games and twists. And that's an important piece of it as well. Uh, and these are just kind of a, a, a co collaboration and a collection of things, but really working those same things. So we work the pass offs, we work the post and stabs, we work um, the, the, the two punch delays. And that's really what we have here, right? Looper takes you to the penetrator, uh, and now we're able to pick up uh, games. We work in our three interiors. So we'll do this together on the interior side of it as well. And not everything's going to be a game, right? So um, again, that's kind of. Again, a good a good thing to, to, to do is, is keep it straight, keep them honest so they're not playing the drill. Um, three techniques. So here's, again, the looper will take you to the penetrator every time. And that's two punch delay, that's post and stab, right? We got everything we want right there. Uh, being physical on those punches. Violent hands. You don't have to be uh, the world's best bench presser to be a great pass protector. You have to have great feet. You have to have violent hands, um, and, and if you can do that, you're gonna you're gonna be able to uh, you know, protect and, and, and do some great things. You know, this here, here's a situation where we're in decent shape, probably a little wide, but our, we got strong hands right here. In fact, we're beat technically right there. We're beat, uh, but we have pretty good strong hands. Get some extension, be able to get get them off of us again. We can sit it back down. Quarterback has time to step up and deliver the ball. So. Um, you know, some, some various things will do work in the pass pro element of it. Um, it. It's certainly something that we have to be great at, uh, even though that's not really what, what we do. We are not throwing the ball 65 times a game. You know, we are uh, really working to establish a run game, establish a play action um, a game there, and then have the ability to draw back when we need to. But uh, um, we put a lot of emphasis on some of the little techniques, more so in pass pro than we will in other things. The biggest things we talk about is our set and then our violent hands, our violent punch. And uh, um, we, can, we can say that's moving muscle, that kind of stuff, we're going to be in pretty good shape. Um, the other thing that, that we spend a, lo a lot of time on, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about it, because it does help us in protections, is, is our preparation from a mental standpoint, the, the blitz pickup and, and the knowledge of the de defense that we're playing. We have, uh, we spend a tremendous amount of time breaking down our pressures, working our pressures, um, and, and doing things to prepare our kids so that they know really what's coming before uh, it's, it, it does. And, and they can recognize um, 
coverages, the structures, they can recognize uh, linebacker depths and, and um, different alignments, um, little tells, little, little tendencies that, that we'll pick up um, that, that really help them anticipate what's coming. And, and so uh, that certainly plays into our ability to protect as well. Um, and com- coupled with uh, the way we do our pass pro, which I think has been very, very effective. We get a lot of that, that circuit done pre-practice. Most of the Indy, if not all the Indy, is spent on run game. Um, and then uh, we'll do some crossover periods with the defense every day, certainly with pods and, and half line, four and two, those type of things. Um, and then we'll go to inside team. And then during our special teams at the end of practice is usually when one-on-ones are, occur, or seven-on-seven maybe is when one-on-ones occur. Um, and, and then our BPU will be used uh, during some special team stuff as well. So um, you can see the way we structure our, our training, the way we structure our practice and, and, and our drill work is designed uh, so that we are at our freshest in the run game stuff because I want them to feel the power. I want them to be powerful when we're training in the run. Um, and then, and then our legs are are gassed when we're doing our pass pro stuff because if it reflects the game, that's that's how it's going to be. So um, that's a little bit of our ph- our philosophy, a little bit on, on some of the drill work. Again, we uh, do teach technique. We are we do preach technique, uh, but not at the expense of physicality. So we will, um, you know, we'll bring things back. We'll reload things and, and do some stuff to get their second steps in the ground and, and stuff. We don't over coach. A tremendous amount of hand placement. We don't have a thousand, you know, lingos and, and, and vocab words for that. Um, you know, we, we, we teach Amy points, we teach our steps, uh, and, and then we pride ourselves on being physical and, and, and practicing that way. And if you've heard me talk before, I, I say this quite frequently, but you can't expect to live uh, or to play physically and not live in that world uh, every day. And, and it's one thing to go out there on Saturdays and, 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 and you know, talk physical football and talk it throughout the week, but then you're only in pads on Tuesday, you know, and then everything else is a walkthrough or no sweat Thursdays or fast Fridays or whatever it is. And, and you're never hitting. We, we're, we're padded throughout the week. Um, we do inside drill on Thursday. Um, it, it's, it's a part of who we are. It's ingrained in who we are. And so when push comes to shove, and all you do is turn on our film, we're, we, we certainly struggled at, at, in areas at times throughout the years, but the one thing we are very, very effective at is changing the line of scrimmage, um, getting vertical movement, uh, what we call dominating the line of scrimmage. And, and, and we're very physical. We finish um, and we knock people around up front. And that's a, a point of pride for us. But when you look at it, it's, it's because we live in that world every day. And, and so the guys have an appreciation of it. They train the body. Um, I, I certainly – know the arguments against it and and i disagree with them i think um from an injury per standpoint uh, i think your body is prepared then to handle the rigors of the game and and uh, again when you're the one doing the hitting right you're either the hammer or the anvil when you're the one doing the hitting um and you're living in that world every day uh so the, your opponent's gonna spit the bit and, and that's generally what what does happen especially when in a short yardage or high pressure situation uh, because they don't put themselves in that position every day and so we spend a, a tremendous amount of time and energy put forth into the mentality of the way we practice, the mentality of the way we train. Um, and, and I think that certainly shows up on game day. So um, technique is vital. It is important, but not at the expense of physicality. And that's a fundamental belief that we have. And so um, the way we practice reflects that. And, and certainly, hopefully, the way we play reflects that. So um, and the way we call it reflects that. The way we call the game reflects that. So. Um, I guess with that, I'll open up to, to questions, coaches. If you guys have anything or want to dive into anything more, I'd be more than happy to to talk about more stuff or, or show up some some other things we can we can we can talk about. Coach, my question really goes back to a gap power. Um, when you get a true nose head up on the center, your play side guard. What are your teaching points? How long is going to carry that? Was and help for it off? Well, it, it, that's a good question. It depends a little bit. Uh, it depends on a little bit of, of how they're playing us um, and, and, and really where that front side guy is. Um, we're, with a zero nose and we're working a guard tackle or, excuse me, a guard center combination, um, we're, we're going to probably try to throw that guy over much like, a, um, much like a guard tackle would with a tight three technique on a C-gap power. Um, and he's going to spend quite a bit of time 
uh, on that, at least more so maybe than, than you would on C gap power to, to an odd front. And, and really the, the idea there is if the, if the linebacker runs over the top, um, that's okay. We, we, what we call it is U-turn. We call it a U-turn. And so when, you, when, that, when that guard comes off the, the, the ball, in fact, let me see if I can pull one of those up again um, and, and draw it. Uh, we want that linebacker running over the top because that's going to open up. Um, that's going to open up our. Let me show you here. That's going to open up our um, our a gap on the back side. So uh, let me see if I can find a, an odd look. Let me share my screen with you here. Hold on one second, guys. I apologize. This Zoom stuff is fantastic, but it's, it does take some getting used to here. Can you guys see that, the Boise clip? Yep. Okay, so in this case, um, we, we're going to spend a lot of time. We want to knock that thing over the top. And if this guy runs over the top, that's, that's great. That's fine because he'll U-turn on him. And, again, now that, that just keeps this A-gap open that much more for the cutback. So that's really what we're, what we're trying to, to, to get done. Um, if, if this guy's staying put and maybe this guy does kind of hang back, then we can get up and secure that and, and we're still in good shape. So um, the, the, the really, just like anything, the second level is going to determine who comes off when, when they come off. So right here, we do end up kind of knocking that thing over. You can see the center's trying to work it over there too. Um, he's staying backside here, which is fine. We actually get the double bump like we're talking about. There's the hole. The back misses the cut here, right? So the back actually is wrong here. But there's your hole opening up, right? I mean, that should be a, should be a touchdown. Uh, and, and, and running that A-gap power stuff. So this guy's hanging backside here. You can see we're hanging a little bit. There's not much to hang on. The center overtakes it all. He's hanging a little bit. He gets up to that second level because this guy's hanging back. He knows it's A-gap power, right? They know we're going to run A-gap power here. So he's hanging back, taking away the A-gap. Well. That's great. We get the double bump. We keep the front side A gap open, which is what, what, what really is so lethal about this thing is if you say, okay, I'm going to take away this. I'm going to, you know, I get a puller. We, we down blocks these, these, these backers read the guards or, or maybe key the backs. They run over the top because it's, because it's power. Okay. We would have what we call the U turn there. And now you still have this hole on the, on the back side A gap cut. Um, if, if he stays backside like this, we get the double bump on the front side that opens us up, and, and now we get the front side A gap open. So that's the, the, the thing that's really um, pretty good about this A gap power, and it, it, especially when you have the ability to run C gap too, is, is they should not be right defensively. It makes it very challenging defensively because if they're going to say, okay, we're going to hang back and take A gap power away, we'll go to the C gap power stuff, and it'll hit right there, right? And we don't do anything about this, the third level. The third level, back's got to make the third level miss. We might crack him from time to time, whatever it is. But um, the old line's not responsible for that. Uh, but if they're going to say, okay, we're going to take power away and scrape over the top, well, well now you have this A-gap to A-gap cut, uh, which makes it very, very lethal um, in, in the game. But this is a good example of, of the odd stuff um, where we would be trying to really keep this thing pinned much like power. But if you did scrape over the top, we could certainly U-turn, and um, I think I got a, I think I got another clip here, maybe of, of uh, a U-turn example. I'll have to see which one it is. Might be this one with our front side tackle here. Let me see if, if our front side tackle ends up U-turn on this guy. So here's a here's a good example of the U-turn. So as we're as we're climbing here, this front side tackle is going to go block this guy in, in normal C gap power you're going to want to pin that in, in a gap if he goes over the top like that you can see him kind of work him out over the top here that's what we're looking for and again there's your cut right there's there's nobody left backside here so uh, a run through a run over run over the tops by uh, on a gap power is something that's actually okay it's encouraged um because if you can get that thing done you got you got no crossover player from a defensive perspective. So your cutback is there. So um, that's how we would combat really the odd look um, with the backer, with the backer, uh, whether he runs down like he did at Boise, stays put, 
or he runs over the top like like you see here at uh, at UNLV. Coach, my question is, what are you keying from a coordinating standpoint to tell you whether or not A-gap or C-gap power is your best call in the course of a game? Well, we'll look how, how they play it, how the, how the backers play it, um, and before we even go into the week of preparation. So we'll look on how they play power. We'll look on how these guys, the, the, the D-line plays power. We get a lot of this, which is you saw early on we were training that, that, that kind of that special uh, line stunt. So we train a lot of that. Um, this this type of stuff opens you up though to the a gap cuts uh, and and those. so um, we'll always have some version of of a gap power going in. That's kind of um, you know the history of of, of our offense, I guess, uh, dating back to NDSU and now uh, there and K State and here and and everywhere that this tree has been. Um, so we'll always carry some version of it, uh, and then we've really evolved to having the ability to get to the C-gap power stuff that, that was really non-existent before. And that is really the influence I brought from, from Wisconsin here. So we've been able to mirror those and, and, and um, kind of match those up and, and have them fit off of each other. So during the game, like we, we went into the New Mexico game thinking we were going to run A-gap power all day long. And uh, they, they took it away. They, set, they just sat back in the backside A-gap and, and didn't, didn't uh, really allow us any cutback. Because the back is not allowed on a got power, the back is not allowed to bounce it. He is he is going a gap to a gap, and if it's not there, it's not there. And and so um, that's really kind of the maybe the downfall. So if the guys are taking that a gap stuff away, they're they're going to be susceptible here. And and so um, we always carry both coming in, uh, some version of it. And, and uh, of either one, because we have variations of each, right? We have the ability to run some stuff off the ball like this. We have the ability to run uh, to a tight end. We can run it out of 11, 10, uh, not 10. We can run it out of 11 or 21 or 12 personnel. Um, and then we do the same thing with our C-gap stuff, right? We can run six, uh, seven-man power, like one-back power. We can run two-back power, uh, C-gap power. And, and so we have varieties of, of each one. But we will look at, at, at a couple of those different things. Number one, mainly, is how the linebackers play in power. Um, uh, do we think we can generate movement on the nose? Uh, because your center has to, has to be good. He has to, um, if you're blocking back to a three, he's got to be able uh, to keep that A-gap open and have a, be, be firm in that back block. Um, we've got to be able to generate movement here. Um, if... if we're playing a guy that's that's maybe a stud inside. We don't think we can get it done now. We we believe we have three of the best interior guys in the conference, and so um, very rarely do we ever go into a game thinking, okay, our, our three interiors can't get it done. Um, but what they might say, we might say, hey, you know, they're they're hanging back. The a gap's not going to be there. Um, let's let's work a little more c gap power, and then we get into the game. These guys are flying over the top. We can easily come back to that. That's our bread and butter. So that that really. Um, is, is, is kind of the mindset from a coordinating standpoint is, is what are they giving us and, and where do we think we can um, really take advantage of our interior, right? Where can we generate the most movement? Where can we, can we get this guy moved out of here? Are they moving? Um, and if they're doing all that, then we probably will get to a little more C-gap stuff, right? So um, we'll look, at, we'll look at, at some of those tendencies from a defensive perspective and how they play it, especially if they played us in the past you know, former coordinators and, or new coordinators and things like that are a little bit um, maybe easy to, to get, you know, because they don't, they don't, or because I haven't seen the A-gap stuff, they don't know it as well. Uh, because it is a challenge for defensive guys, right? How do, if you're a linebacker or a coordinator, how do you tell this guy to sit, sit home, sit home, sit home, and then we're running C-gap and all of a sudden we're, we're to him every time, right? So there's a, there's certainly an advantage that we have, um, much like option teams, right? You take away one thing, we're going to something that's going to open up. That's the way our gap scheme has really evolved to help us do that. Um, there's also a time and a place. We don't run a whole lot of A-gap power, you know, down on the goal line. You know, we'll get to some more C-gap type stuff down there in, in short yard situations. And, you know, we've, we've really, um, when you look at it, you know, we've got this reputation for A-gap power. Um, but if we go back and, and do a study on, on the year, um, it's, it's probably our, it's probably our third, maybe second most productive concept. Uh, we were we we ran inside zone. I would say seventy percent of the time. 
And so when you look at that, uh, you know, teams prepare for the A-gap power, A-gap power, and then all of a sudden we're getting, you know, tremendous movement on our zone combinations, gaining four or five yards a pop. Um, they'll, they'll start running guys down. Well, then we come back to our, our C-gap stuff. Um, and so that it makes it very challenging, I think, for a defense to, uh, to, to prepare, especially when we can generate that type of movement on the first level. And that's where our focus is, is, is getting, generating movement um, on the first level putting the defense in the laps of the linebackers and then, and then uh, coming off and, and getting to them the second level and then making the safeties make all the plays. So um, from a coordinating standpoint, that's what we would, we would look at, how those guys play it and, and where we can get move, the most movement and what fits best uh, on that particular scheme.